There are currently over 235 characters in Marvel Strike Force with very limited resources. So you have to pick and choose which of the characters that you're gonna build and which you're gonna pass on. And in this video, I'm gonna count down the most valuable characters on my roster, meaning if they were missing from my roster, I'd be screwed. So if you're ready to see who are the MVPs in Marvel Strike Force in this current meta, then you know what to do, Valley Club. Find that like button. Let's go smash it. Valley Flyer. Hello Marvel Strike Force fans, welcome back to the Valley Flying channel, I'm Valley Flying, hope you're having a great day. We are counting down the MVPs of Marvel Strike Force in this current meta. Now this is not necessarily the best characters in Marvel Strike Force, more along the lines of these would be the most painful to replace, and my content getting through Marvel Strike Force, it'd be very, very tough if these characters were missing from my roster. But before we get to this countdown, if you haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button because we have at least five Marvel Strike Force videos per week on this channel featuring gameplay, countdown lists like this, news, we got tips, tricks, everything to help you in Marvel Strike Force. But let's talk about this list. Now, like I said, it's not necessarily the best characters in Marvel Strike Force, but if you did take all these characters on the list and all the honorable mentions, I think these are the best characters in Marvel Strike Force. But the order is more along the lines of they would be the most painful to replace. I would have I would have a lot of time. Uh, I would have a very, very tough time getting through some of the content that I'm trying to get through if these characters were not on my roster. And if you haven't seen it in my previous videos, the way I value these game modes in Marvel Strike Force is Arena because that's where you're going to get the most power of course then you're getting the raids because we're doing the raids every single day so being able to get through these very very easily or even sim this to save time is a very important game mode crucible is also very important that is uh, one of the most fun game modes in my opinion in marvel strike force but that's also where we're getting some of the best rewards in marvel strike force and the upcoming character quicksilver is going to be released through Quicks uh to cosmic crucible we also have war, which is fun for a lot of players. So if you value these game modes differently than I do, then you may have some different MVPs. Also, if you're playing a little different in your arena shard or doing some different raids, you may value some of these characters a little different than I do. But in my opinion, these are the most valuable characters in Marvel Strike Force. Let's get on with this list. First character coming in at number 10, and there are gonna be some honorable mentions, guys, is Spider Weaver. She's a very, very good character. If you don't have Apocalypse in your arena, that in your arena shard, you don't see him on defense, you're not using him on offense. Well, Spider Weaver is still gonna be involved in the arena meta. Not involved in my arena meta, so she doesn't have a lot of value there. She does have that mystic tag. There's a lot of great characters to handle that mystic section of the Doom Raids, so just value there. Where she is shining right now is on Cosmic Crucible. A lot of players have her on defense, and it's a very, very annoying defense with that tangled web in room five, but I use her on offense to counter that tangled web. If I did not have a Weaver to counter their Weavers, Cosmic Crucible would be very, very tough. I have to switch around some of my defense, and I do have her on defense in War, but the main reason she makes this list for me is because of her value in Cosmic Crucible. She may have some other value, the raids or arena, depending if you have Apocalypse or not, but for me, she just makes Cosmic Crucible a lot different, a very, very different experience than I, if I did not have her. So very, very good character, very strong kit. As we move on to the next character, coming in at number nine for this month is a character that some may not have on this list yet. And it is Kestrel, the first original character in Marvel Strike Force. Now, as far as where she is used, I'm not using her in arena at all. She has not been in an arena meta for a while now, but I'm still using her in a skill section, the raids. A lot of that is because I don't have my invader team fully built up. She's, I think her value is going to go down significantly if you don't have that invader, if well, once you have that invader team built up, but currently I don't, which means that all those extra pings that she gets from characters that have defense down being attacked, uh, that I would not have that. She is the main damage dealer in my uh, Secret Avengers invader hybrid for the skill section. Very, very good character. Uh, Secret Avengers and whatever using her on in Crucible is, is a strong, strong uh, team. I use her along with uh, Secret Avengers and Dormammu to counter the Unlimited X-Men in Room 4 works very, very well. I would not have that counter. I would have to switch up a lot of things on defense. So Kestrel gets a lot of value for me. For me, it's the raids. For me, it's Crucible. And of course, very, very good in war as well. Secret Avengers still very good in war, countering teams like maybe the Marauders or some other teams. So Kestrel gets the nod in my book, even though she's lost some value 
early and will be losing some value once those invaders are built up but currently as of right now it would hurt a lot if i don't have kestrel on my roster let's move on to the next one on this list coming in in the number eight spot it's another maybe controversial pick and that is nick fury the reason nick fury is on this list while he i am using him in arena there's a couple different theories of thought using nick fury in that fifth spot or kang in that fifth spot as your arena offense i find it that does depend on the matchups a little bit but i find it a lot of times it's a cleaner fight if i'm using nick fury and getting that speed up having our morgan lefay go before their morgan lefay allowing us to flip that immunity on uh, apocalypse I, I like that a lot doesn't work in all the matchups and if they have some weird placement uh kang sometimes is better but as far as his value it's not just in arena it's also in that same section i'm using kestrel in, in this skill section of the doom raids right now so he is making life a lot easier having him on the field having him on my roster makes it a lot better and also using him with kestrel in that same counter to counter the unlimited x-men in room four and also serves a very good purpose in war as well giving you a lot of offense or defense options which uh, depending what you are doing for that so nick fury still very very valuable in my book and let's move on with the list because this character i think is going to get a little more controversial and it is dr doom still a very very good character he is that ticking time bomb that you always have to be worrying about kind of like red hulk but uh yeah it's, it's, it's the original ticking time bomb if you if you attack him too much if you don't have an ability block he will go crazy now i didn't think he was a very big mvp for me nowadays i did start to place him on defense because one of the battles we did on stream this morning went south normally i'm beating these dr doom compositions on defense well this time we had a little different placement and dr doom kind of smashed us in arena so yeah very very valuable there still using some of the raids he does have that text tag he does have that mystic tag and you know you can place him on some of those teams in the raids as well but he is using a, i'm using him in a lot of counters offensive counters in cosmic crucible as well and it would be very hard to use these counters but then have the main guy that's giving everybody that turn meter giving everybody all their extra turns in dr doom so dr doom yes he's a lot of it's a lot of value in certain game modes particularly arena uh the arena defense he's still very very strong though depending on how the team is placed we're using him a little bit in the raids but again mainly the cosmic crucible is why he is making the book for me let me know your valuation of dr doom as we move on with this list coming in in the next spot in the number six spot zargel rogue and this is another one of these characters that i'm using every day in arena she is in that main arena attack team featuring apocalypse red hulk morgan lefay rogue and i either switch that fifth out for kang or nick fury but rogue is always in that spot she has a very strong taunt that you have to get rid of she has an opening ability to block she can stun enemies she has she has some great things that she does and just by her being in that everyday arena team she makes this spot because if i did not have her that arena battle would get a lot tougher so rogue makes this list and she doesn't have a lot of value in the raids the main team for the raids is that death seed team and not the unlimited x-men team they are losing some value in crucible they're they're not there's a lot more options on defense to beat uh, if you have if you see an uh, unlimited x-men on defense you have a lot more options to beat them they're still very good on offense takes out a lot of teams and they're okay in war but the reason that she is on this list arena would be very very tough for me if i did not have rogue so rogue makes this list for me let me know your valuation of rogue how much you're using her as we move on with this list coming in at the number five spot is Dormammu the ultimate plug and play character gives that revive once and that's why I think he has a lot of value on this now just even without the revive once though is special with that stun very very strong his ultimate is a tide turning it, it turns a tide into battle almost like that Red Hulk ultimate there the Dormammu ultimate still very very important now he did get nerfed a little bit in Cosmic Crucible but I'm still using him in a lot of those teams. Still using him on that same team with Nick Fury, Kestrel to counter the Unlimited X-Men. He's used in a bunch of other teams as well and just, just provides a lot of value. If you see him on uh, off uh, war defense, he's going to make life a little tougher because you have to kill enemies twice. And if you see him on war defense, which is where I see Dormammu placed a lot, it makes those defenses tougher to crack because you have to kill those enemies twice. I don't use him too much on offense right now, but it is still a good offense option if you don't have some of the primary offense attack characters. But that is it for Dormammu. Still a very, very good character. 
using him uh, a lot uh, every crucible every war well war he's more on defense but every crucible i'm using him to counter some of the top defenses and he does have that mystic tag so it's going to give you a lot of value if you have a rotating cast of characters that you're using in the mystic section of the doom raids let's move on to the next character and this guy is definitely involved in the arena meta right now and this is kang now kang is better on offense than defense you don't see him too much on defense when you do you know you can smash that kang because he's not a defensive character he's an offensive character and he does a lot with his turn meter manipulation he could kill characters that have revived once and they aren't going to come back to life very very strong ultimate with kang he is a very strong passive as well which also manipulates that turn meter very good character so i see him stay i see him involved in the arena meta for a while you may or may not be using him but i see a lot of people having that as their attack option maybe not as far as defense but as far as his uh tech tag here I, a lot of people are having success combining him with the Bionic Avengers, taking him in that, taking Iron Man out of that uh, Bionic Avengers spot, putting Kang in there and making those tech raids a lot easier. Using him on that Masters of Evil team every single Crucible match to fight those Wakandans in room six. And he makes the difference. I'm, a lot of times I'm just trying to set up the battle so that Kang could do his ultimate and whatever revive once as those Wakandans have, Kang is going to take care of that. But very, very good character. He is the meta character right now. One of the meta characters right now. So if you don't have Kang, start to build up Kang because uh, you're not going to regret putting some resources in this character. As we move on to the next one, coming in at the number three spot, it is Morgan Le Fay very very good character she started losing a little value but uh, since the introduction of apocalypse i think she is back with a vengeance great on that dark hole team which is still a very very big offensive attack team in cosmic crucible she is does have that mystic tag so she's used in the doom raids but she's on that primary attack team in arena that match would be very very hard if i could get her to go before the enemy apocalypse and before the enemy morgan of that that just flips that immunity on on apocalypse and that fight is way easier so she makes that fight easier she is a very very important character and i'd be a little sad i'd be a little hurt if i did not have her on my roster which is why she is uh making this list today as we move on to the next character coming in at a number two spot and in my opinion the best character in the game especially if you don't have apocalypse and uh, i think it's pretty obvious that i'm talking about red hulk very very strong character his ultimate is something that you always have to account for once he gets those five charges and he has that ability to do his ultimate uh that can turn the tide of the battle so a few tide turning uh moves here one of them is the red hulk one we talked about the Dormammu but and doom as well but i think the biggest threat in the game right now is this red hulk alt uh you got to be careful make sure that he's either stunned or ability block when you're trying to attack him he's going to gain those charges as you uh hit him even more and give him more likelihood that he's going to give you that big big ultimate aoe attack with those battlefield effects very very strong character using him every single day a few times a day in uh, in arena Use him as a backup. I, my rebirth team is not totally built up yet that I could sim reliably to Doom 3.5 raids. So if that goes bad, I still have the Gamma team. I also have the Web Warriors as well as backups. So he's a backup character for the raids. Smashes, smashes in the Crucible, either on offense or defense. Wherever you have him, he's going to get some value. And they they are a war team. The war, the, the, the war is a war team. So... This is a this is very, very good character in my opinion. And if you have used him, and if you've seen that ultimate go off, it is it is, uh, it is a, is an awesome thing. All right, next, last, number one, Apocalypse. Yeah, I, I mean, we're talking about Arena and that is the most valuable game mode. Arena has totally changed up since Apocalypse is in here. A lot of that is because of his passive. He had a few different reworks. He has a very beefy, beefy kit. And we're just talking about the baby apocalypse that's how valuable he is if we had the daddy apocalypse the fully built apocalypse uh he would go from the number one spot to the even more number one spot because that's how good he is as far as his kit though you want that ultimate to go off to get that empowered basic because the empowered basic is almost pretty much an auto kill for any uh enemies there you can't reduce the speed uh, or you can't reduce the accuracy of him and uh any of his allies in arena and war 
you, you can't reduce the speed either except with normal speed moves you can't do it with passives he does a lot to counter the current arena meta and i'd be a little sad especially after all that chase so unlocking all those horsemen all those scourge teams just to get apocalypse be sad if he was not on my roster so for a few different reasons he does make that number one spot but i think he's a top character in the game followed very close behind by a red hulk but let's talk about some honorable mentions because like i said there's a lot of other characters that i need in my roster that i need in the game i just thought those were the top 10 let's let's not forget the rest of the horsemen so let's mention archangel very good in that dead sea team doesn't have a lot of uh, other use outside of the raids the, the Death Seed is a good Cosmic Crucible team and they can counter other Death Seeds. They can counter Rebirths. There's a bunch of things they can counter in Crucible and War, but you're probably using Archangel in the raids. And then the Eternals, Icarus and Cersei. Icarus could have made the spot on his own. Icarus does lose some value if you don't have him with Cersei, but that big ultimate that he does, that double tap that kills flipping everything, very very good character and icarus is uh, one of the top characters in the game but that is it for this list still guys those are my top 12 slash 13 if you include uh, the eternals as one character or two let me know what you think about let me know what your list is who are your mvps that you could not leave without is there someone on this that you value a lot that i left off this list let me know in the comments guys a lot of this is based on where you're on the game and what game modes you're doing so i'm curious to see where people at other uh, places in the game value certain characters. But that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up so YouTube knows that you enjoyed this video. It does help the algorithm. Check me out on social media. Check out some of the other videos on the channel as well. They can provide you with a lot of insight and a lot of uh, tips and tricks to help you in Marvel Strike Force. So I'll see you guys next time. Have a safe rest of your day. Hulk fist bump, Valley Blind out.